Welcome back, y'all, and today let's talk about glowfish. Due to the bright neon colors these fish are available in, glowfish have rapidly become an extremely popular fish amongst beginner fish keepers. But just what are these fish exactly? Well, back in 1999, a group of scientists at the National University of Singapore were working with a gene extracted from a jellyfish that produced a bright green fluorescent coloration. They then inserted this gene into a zebra danio embryo, allowing it to integrate into the fish's genome. This fish would then be a fluorescent green under bright white or ultraviolet lights. They then filed a patent on their work and next created a red fluorescent zebra danio using genes from sea coral. These scientists then met with some businessmen from Yorktown Technologies and created a deal to have a worldwide rights to market their new zebra danio branded as Glowfish. So essentially, glowfish are genetically modified or GMO fish. Since then, there have been several new species of glowfish that have been created. The glowfish available on the market now include tetras, danios, barbs, sharks, and the newest addition, the betta fish. There have also been a few different aquarium kits, decorations, and gravel created and sold by the glowfish brand and marketed, of course, to keep glowfish in. Now, the fish that were originally used to create the glowfish version all were considered to be hardier, more sturdy fish that are a little more forgiving when it comes to mistakes with water parameters. Unfortunately, in my years of experience taking care of them in the pet store, the glowfish don't seem to be quite as hardy as their original counterparts. So is it that the fish are less hardy or are they being kept in inappropriate environments? Now there is a lot of good to be said about the glowfish because of their brilliant bright fluorescent colors, these fish are very attractive to a younger audience. This can help to bring a new generation into the fish keeping hobby, and if properly cared for, they can add a really nice pop of color to a well set up aquarium that children and adults can appreciate together. The worst thing that I've noticed about glowfish is not the fish themselves, but more, more the tanks and things that are marketed for these fish. For example, the largest aquarium kit that I've seen marketed for glowfish is 10 gallons. Meanwhile, most of the species require a minimum of a 20 to 30 gallon tank. So you can see where this might be confusing to a lot of new fish keepers. Another issue with these fish is that they were genetically modified to have bright lighting help to improve and brighten their coloration. While some of the species of fish used to create the glowfish become stressed if they are kept in brightly lit tanks. As with the black skirt tetra and the betta being perfect examples of this. In my opinion, the glowfish themselves are really, really not the problem. It's all about how they're marketed and how the products for them are marketed. Even the glowfish website itself I find a bit concerning due to all the misinformation that I found just spending a few minutes looking around on the site. In one spot, they have it written that glowfish can be added to any community aquarium. That's just plain bad information. Some of these fish, such as bettas and barbs, tend not to get along well with others without careful, careful planning. They also sell glowfish betta sorority packs of six female bettas and recommend only a minimum tank size of 10 gallons. A 10 gallon tank is not really gonna be adequate for six female bettas. You're gonna want at least a 20 gallon tank for six, bigger always being better. They even put on the site that female bettas can be put in with tiger barbs. Tiger barbs. Tiger barbs are well known to be extremely aggressive fin nippers. That's not the ideal situation to put bettas in. Has it ever been done successfully? Yes, but does it normally work out? No. The best case scenario is that the tiger barbs will just outcompete the betta for food. They also do recommend that you keep at least a minimum of five tiger barbs, which is all well and fine, although honestly, I would recommend at least a minimum of 10 when it comes to tiger barbs to try to lower that aggressive fin nipping in them. But they recommend that whole rule of thumb of you only need one gallon of water per tiger barb that you're keeping. You can't keep five tiger barbs in a five gallon tank. They get to be around three inches in size and they're big, big swimmers. The bare, bare minimum tank size recommended for tiger barbs is 20 gallons. And I would 
argue along with a lot of other people that really should be 30 gallons. So I'm very disappointed that even on the Glowfish website, they don't really have very good information on how to properly care for these fish. So with that being said, I will be doing a series of care guide videos for the Glowfish based on the fish that they originally were created from. The truth is, while some people may object to Glowfish being on the market, as long as they keep selling, they will keep coming out with new species of glowfish. The best thing we can really do is research the species they were created from and try to educate ourselves on how best to take care of that particular species. And we need to focus a little less on what will best show off the bright colors of that fish. So anyway, guys, that's all I really have for y'all today. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!